What's up, guys? Mark Holcomb from Periphery here, and I am at Pro Audio Star uh, to chat about guitars with you guys today. Yeah, my relationship with PRS goes back ooh, to, to very early uh, Periphery era years, maybe 2010, 2011. Um, I, I met Paul on a whim, um, and I think we, we were on Paul Reed Smith's radar because we were local. So Periphery is from Washington, D.C., and, um, and PRS is based in Stevensville, Maryland, and they were working on what is now the Archon. Um, you know, any heavy amp fan knows the, the Archon, the, the PRS Archon, and it's a, it's a really killer amp, but back in the day, PRS was not really on the map for that kind of thing, and they were looking to make their first sort of jump into the, the high gain amp uh, world, and they were they were developing it. They were in the midst of of sort of getting it off the ground, and Paul wanted ears on it. Um, and I guess you know from from a band who played heavy music, so we were very flattered to go out there and take a listen to what they were doing. And that was I think the first time I ever met Paul Smith and the family uh, over there. And um, it was it was just to give our feedback on the Archon. And it was, it was pretty casual. There was no talk of like, hey, you know, maybe try out some guitars or anything like that. It was just give input on the amp. And then um, I think it was like a year, two later, that I met him and Rich Hannon and Bev Fowler at NAMM um, in Anaheim, California. And then, and then formally we began talking guitars. And, and, and then Paul sort of posed the question, you know, if, if, you, if you were to play a PRS, what changes would you make to what's already in place? And then we got in a very passionate conversation um, about what we would do. We didn't agree eye to eye, but I, I feel like we 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 constructed a, a much cooler um, idea of what a, a, a guitar could be, and that's what you know. That's what turned into the, the signature model. You know, the very first core model that we put out. And I could be wrong. 2013. I think it's 2013 was the was the year or 14. Don't listen to me. Google it. <laughs> As far as what sets this guitar apart from, you know, the, the typical PRS lineup, um, it's two things in my mind, along with a bunch of other stuff, but the two main things, at least, you know, 11 years ago when we started specking it out on the, on the US, the core model, um, is the scale length, 25 and a half inches, and the fretboard radius, which is totally flat, 20 inch fret, fretboard radius. On the US model, um, years ago, that was one thing that, that I, I really wanted um, Paul and the team to consider. But I know that's not something they'd, they'd typically done um, before for any of their, their core guitars or, or SE guitars for that matter. Um, those were two specs that I always associated with like a, like a shredder guitar from the 80s and that's my era. Like I, I grew up um, in love basically with like thrash metal and, and shredder music from the 80s and early 90s. And um, something about having a flat fretboard to me felt right in terms of vibrato and bending um, and just playing faster overall, like, it's something how I've, 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 I've just learned to play. Um, and with the scale length, obviously, that's something that we kind of need for periphery, is just having um, a slightly longer scale to accommodate these messed up tunings that we use, like I typically use drop C tuning, but we go even further down on a sixth string, we go down to drop G. So you basically have a G on your fifth string and then a G on your sixth string. Um, so songs we have like, you know, for instance, Reptile, um, Zagreus has that same tuning. Um, and then on a seven, you know, don't even get me started. We have I think, a drop F sharp tuning on a seven string. Uh, so yeah, we, we're, we're very adventurous. We don't like to limit ourselves with any one or two tunings uh, across six, seven and eight string guitars. So um, that was a huge thing when developing this guitar initially um, for the core model. And then when it came time to do the SE, um, we needed those specs going forward. Um, and that was something that was, you know, mandated across 
you know, from PRS to me, it's like we need to keep everything that was special about that core model, put it into SE, um, keep the pickup. So so these these are slightly different. So originally it was the Seymour Duncan Alpha and Omega. This is now the Seymour Duncan uh, Scarlet and Scourge. Here it's a slightly quieter pickup. Um, we, we really focused on, on having a lot of clarity, sacrificing some of the gain, again, letting you compensate for it in the amp or whatever pedal you're using, whatever modeler you're using. But have it be really clear and really sort of punchy and percussive, especially in the bridge pickup. That was, that was the main focus of, uh, of the set. Um, and again, have it so, you know, split coil settings are, are really prioritized. It, it tends to be an afterthought. I think sometimes with pickups um, and, and the way, you know, people use them in metal and rock, um, there's not a lot of split coil stuff um, that's really prioritized when it comes to specking out pickups and, and gear and guitars. But for this, um, it, was a, it was a really high priority. And I, I use it all the time with Periphery. Like if you ever go see our show live, you know, we're playing a heavy riff, there'd be a really massive sounding part. Um, take a close look at my pickup configuration. I'm not just riding a bridge pickup um, like you would think I'm, I may be. I'll sometimes impulsively just throw it in a split coil setting just to see if I can add this like stringy quality um, to, to this heavy sounding part. And um, and you'd be surprised at, at the, the sort of, um, just this extra level of aggression um, that sounds like a, a punk band, um, but uh, no, it, it, this, this extra level of sort of angry that you hear um, across the whole mix, you know, one guitar, two guitars in, in a split coil setting playing this really massive groove. Um, it's really effective. So, so that was a huge um, priority when, when developing a guitar, string through body, which was a must from day one, again, with the core model. And yeah, I mean, top, top to bottom, this is meant to be the sort of jack of all trades for everything that I do in Periphery. And I think, you know, in the early days of Periphery, you can kind of pigeonhole us as being, you know, like a straight up metal band. I mean, we are still a metal band, but we were kind of more in one lane. We do some clean stuff sometimes, but most of the time it was full on, in your face, playing heavy stuff at you all the time. But now, you know, if you go put on any of our last couple records, you'll hear, you know, jazzy sounding parts, you'll hear these weird fusion sounding sections. Um, again, the coil splitting stuff that I was that I was talking about. Um, a bunch of clean tones, ambient tones, it's all over the map. And um, and for periphery, you know, aside from the amps and the modeler stuff that we're using, first and foremost, the, the guitar and the pickups need to be able to handle all of that stuff comfortably without having to push it um, too much or sort of, you know, square peg, round hole kind of thing. You know, you don't want to be um, using the wrong gear for this kind of stuff. I'm very proud of what we de developed here uh, with, with PRS and, you know, it was one thing to sort of put all of these like pie in the sky features in a guitar that cost whatever it was, $5,000 at the time. That was the original price ish of the, of the you know the 2014 2013 core model but this i don't know how much this does uh, this costs off the top of my head i think it's like a thousand twelve hundred bucks something like that at the most but you know the fact that we could squeeze all of those features into this is you know pretty insane to me um and i don't take it for granted so thank prs for that don't thank me i don't know how they how they did that so yeah i'm very proud of what we've what we've done here find this guitar as well as the seven string version and many many other sick prs's here at uh, at pro audio star